Yeah, winning, winning Western States is pretty surreal. Uh, it's been, it was, yeah, it's been on my radar as a race forever. And since I finished uh, on the podium in 2019, but felt like I didn't have my best day. Yeah, there was always that itch that I needed to scratch and yeah, got being able to prepare meticulously for the race and then execute the race to exactly how I wanted to. I think it's pretty rare that in a hundred miler that everything goes to plan. And yeah, I was probably pretty lucky that things did go to plan. Um, so yeah, I guess it hasn't fully sunk in yet, but it's, yeah, it's starting to. Um, and for me, it's definitely the biggest result in my career so far. And yeah, it's incredibly exciting that it's one of these massive races that not that many people get to tick off winning um and yeah and it's done and it definitely doesn't there are definitely areas of the race that i think i can improve um and i can't really believe i'm saying that two days later yeah i think for me crossing the finish line was just an expression of what i had been thinking of for the last six months um since the beginning of january well since after utmb last year and i knew that i had a place the whole focus was on Western States and it was about executing the right day and like I've said a lot of times before for me it's process not outcome and I knew that I had been following the process the whole time and everything had been meticulously planned and the process was as good as it. it was better than it had ever been before but just because you focus on the process that doesn't mean you're going to get the outcome that you want and I think when when you get the outcome that you want at the end of following the process, it makes it really sweet because a lot of the time it, that doesn't actually happen. It's great focusing on the process, but someone else might be doing the same thing and they then achieve their goal and maybe you don't. Yeah, before the race, it was sort of a little bit of a mix of emotions. I was super excited because I knew that I was in, I thought that I was in good shape. Um, my training had gone completely to plan and yeah, looking back to my Garmin Connect files, I had averaged 126 miles a week since the 1st of January. Um, that's by far the most consistent I've ever been in my training. Uh, and there was some really, really good quality in there. And yeah, being able to combine that with some heat training and then some altitude training as well um, in Flagstaff and in Phoenix for the heat. Yeah, it just, yeah, things have kind of just fell into place. Um, so, yeah, I was excited because I knew I was in good shape, but then I was also nervous because I knew that I was in really good shape. The more you dive into the detail, like the more you can negate that from happening. Like, why do ultras go wrong? Okay, well, you get too hot and you overheat. Okay, well, let's implement and let's practice really good cooling strategies and let's keep the core body temp low. Okay, great. Then stomach goes bad okay well if my stomach goes bad well this is what I'm gonna do and this is my nutrition plan this is what I'm gonna follow and I think with this block it wasn't just the like on the surface training cool you ran loads of miles some fast some good quality some slow you did all the physical training but it was then all of the other little one percenters that made the real difference taking me from 99% ready to 100% ready. And I think those small things, they are just marginal gains. Like you've got to be able to do, you've got to be able to put in the work, you've got to be able to put in the solid training before you start thinking about the sexy stuff. The heat strategy, the periodization of dropping down from altitude to make sure you're ready to perform at your best. That stuff's all really nice to have. And I think it's all far too often that people focus on the small things rather than the big things. It's like recovery. How do you, I get asked so many times, what's the best tool for recovery? My mattress, sleep. Like if you nail your sleep, you nail your nutrition, you nail your training, you don't need to do anything else. Yeah, looking back at my training, it was by far, yeah, by far the best block I've ever had. If I can ever replicate a block similar, I think it, I genuinely think it will be Someone would have to have the most incredible day. Um, which is, in one way, it's great because you know you can do it. In another way, it's scary because now you're like, well, I've done it. I should be able to do it again. 
But then I think going, making sure you don't have that mentality of, oh, because I've done it once, it means I can do it again. It's like, okay, cool, well, that's done. Let's wipe the slate clean. What did we learn? And then take a step back. Okay, cool, well, let's not copy it, exactly the plan, because you're going to be doing a different race. But how can we take those lessons into the next block? Yeah, when you look back at the names of athletes who have won Western States, they're all people that I, I have and still do look up to and they inspired me to get into the sport and yeah it, my name is going to be there forever um, and you put it alongside you look at the male and female winners from the same year it's me and Courtney DeWalter and I think any time that your name is mentioned the same sentence as the likes of Courtney then you're doing something right yeah it's my first win at Western States and I hope it won't be my last.